What did you do, bro? All right. All right. Let's uh let's look at example B. So we'll get uh recording going now uh, for for you guys that that are. All right. So the first piece has x squared. And it happens when x is less than two. And then the second piece is negative 3x plus 5. And let's say that's happening when x is greater than 2. There's our piecewise defined function. Just two pieces on this one, not three. First one's not linear, obviously. What shape does that one generally have? Parabola, a U-shape kind of idea. All right. What do we know about important points uh, for the first part? One of them is going to occur at positive 2, right? Because that's the value that's listed in my domain. And that ordered pair would be 2 what? 2 squared is 4. All right. Now, because it's a parabola, What's one of the most important points on a parabola? The vertex. Okay, what would be the vertex for x squared? Zero, zero. Good, Jason. You whispered it so y'all wouldn't hear. But it's zero, zero. That's an important point, right? Because the vertex on a parabola is one of the most important. Another important one would be x and y, or x intercepts or y intercepts for for that particular parabola. Just so happens that they're the origin, so you can't have any others. Uh, if it's the origin as the vertex. Uh, so what would be another point that's on this graph so we get a better picture? If 2, 4 is on there, what would negative 2 give us? Positive 4, it would also give us that. It's that reflected point. Remember, uh, parabolas are symmetric. Across, you know, the, the axis of symmetry down the down goes right down through the vertex. So that can help you get a better picture of going on. Now, so when we go to graph that piece, draw a coordinate plane here. So I know the vertex here is at zero, zero. I know I've got negative two, four. And at positive 2, 4, what should I put? <coughs> Filled in circle or open? open? Open circle because my inequality had didn't have an equal to mark. I put a closed circle on negative 2, 4 because my domain is all the x's that are what to positive 2? Less than. So I know anything that's happening from here to the left. Oh, we didn't knock that off. <laughs> It's gonna gonna be a closed circle for the for the first part. All right. So that graph, the parabola, does that sort of thing. Nice smooth line there. Not a V shape, not a point, because that's absolute value, but a but a nice little sweep through the origin there. All right. So that gets us our first part of the graph. What do we know about part B? It's a slope-intercept form uh, equation. Uh, an important point for that one would be 2, negative 1 when you plug that in, negative 1, or negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So that's how we know that point is there. And then uh, so I'm just going to go to 2, negative 1. And should I put an open or filled in circle? Open again because it doesn't have the equal to mark. Okay, and then which direction am I going to go? If I'm going to use the shortcut of using the count and the slope, which is the easiest way to graph lines, uh, which, which direction do I go? Down and to the right, negative 3 over 1. I can do that a couple of times if I want to, just to get a better picture there. Um, I know I'm going to the right because my x values do what? In the domain here. They go bigger, right? They're to the to the right of two. So that's how I know that's the direction I need to go. Uh, and then I draw that line. 
fun stuff. All right, let's get those things. Let's get the domain of this particular function. All right, remember domain, le reading left to right. So uh, what's the, where are we starting with our domain? Negative infinity. So we're reading across, negative infinity, everything's working until we get here. That's open circle. Is that covered by anybody? Another open circle, which means it's not covered, right? So we're skipping positive two. So this is where uh, Greenlee said, we've been doing this. We're doing that again here because we're skipping positive two because it's open circled on both pieces. So union or parenthesis, union parenthesis. And then from there, our X values for the red part go toward what? Positive infinity. So there's our domain for that piecewise defined function. You get the same thing by just looking at putting these together. If you can visualize putting together the domains here, you can get the domain without the graph. If you draw the graph correctly, it makes it a little easier to see visually, but you can visualize it in your head. Uh, can help. What would we have done if one of them would have been filled in, you wouldn't have skipped it. Because it's like, if this one would have been filled in, it would have covered this open one. That's what happened. So it would have been negative infinity to positive infinity if one of those would have had an equal to mark on it. Yes, ma'am. Um, might be a dumb question. I don't know. Where did we get um, zero, zero from? How did we know that that was the... Is that like something that always happens, or is it? It was the vertex of the parabola. Because we were, we knew that x squared was a it's a quadratic. It has that parabola shape, and we remember from algebra one and algebra two that that parabola is a vertex is a very important point on there. So we thought, well, we need to find it. It happens to be zero zero, which fits in our domain for that piece. Uh, for that one, uh, that's general information for that for it just plain x squared if it were uh if it had like x squared plus 3x minus 7 like a whole thing you could do the negative b over 2a and then plug that back in to get the y value for that that's the just but because it was just plain old x squared it always is going to be zero zero for it uh, but if there's some other stuff in there you got to do that negative b over 2a that we did back in the algebra two so. all right let's get the range range of this graph. 